So we've seen that the integral and the derivative undo each other. Now, what happens in this case here? So notice that in this case, we now have a function as a as the end bound. So our bound is no longer just x, but the bound is actually a function, or we'll call f of x. And when this happens, this f of x becomes embedded in our antiderivative. So how does that affect our, our answer when we differentiate this? So let's do this in steps. So when I establish g of x, I'm going to work out the antiderivative, use my antiderivative function. So I'm going to work this out. So my g of x is going to be equal to, well, the antiderivative of cos is going to be sine. So I'm going to end up with sine t. And I'm going to embed my bounds. I'm going to have my bounds here, a. And my n bound becomes not x, but a function of x, or x squared. So evaluating this. Evaluating this, we're going to end up with sine of x squared. Notice that the x squared is now embedded inside the antiderivative function minus sine a. And again, sine a now becomes a constant. So when I do the derivative now, it's going to disappear into a constant. So now differentiating this g function, so g prime of x, I'm going to differentiate this antiderivative function, which I just worked out, sine of x squared minus sine of a. plugging in my x squared here. The derivative of this is going to work out to sine, sorry, the derivative of sine is going to be the cosine. And we can see that I start with cosine, I end with cosine. However, now that I have an embedded function, because the end point is a function that ends up embedded inside the cosine, I have to apply chain rule and differentiate the x squared into 2x. So I'm, this is applying the chain rule. Okay, and then this, this is a constant, so this differentiates to 0. So. This is slightly different when we have these n bounds as actual functions. And to accommodate that, we're going to embed that function into our, our integrand, or cos in this case. But we have to remember to apply chain rule and differentiate the inside function and add it on as a chain. So we, can, we don't really need to do these, the, all these steps because we know that by the definition of, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, when I take this g function and I find g prime, so I have g prime, I'm going to differentiate this expression, 1 to 2e to the x. I just have to remember that the derivative is going to undo the integral. So I'm going to end up with my original function. So again, this is what I'm starting with. I'm going to end up with the same thing. It's going to be 1. The inside part of it's going to be the same as well. 1 plus t cubed. But inside that t, I'm going to embed my e to e to the x. And because that's an embedded function and I differentiated it, I just have to make sure that I apply chain rule to that. So I can see my fundamental theorem of calculus showing up as my original function. And 
my original function square root 1 plus t cubed shows up again here. Now the end bound has to be embedded and because it's embedded we apply chain rules. So this is a further application of the fundamental theorem of calculus.